In our headlines for this evening, locally, Honorable Dr. Timothy Harris sworn in as Prime Minister and the Team Unity Coalition celebrate victory with rally in Nevis. The details are straight ahead. Good evening and welcome to the Nevis Newscast. Today is Thursday, February 19th, 2015. I am Bronte Swanston Hendrickson. The Honorable Dr. Timothy Harris has been sworn in as the third Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis. The event took place yesterday, Wednesday, February 18th, at a ceremony held at Government House on St. Kitts. The Oath of Allegiance, the Oath of Office, and the Oath of Secrecy were administered by resident judge Justice Marlene Carter. I, Timothy Sylvester Harris. I, Timothy Sylvester Harris. Do swear. Do swear. That I will honor. That I will honor. Uphold. Uphold. And preserve. And preserve. The Constitution of St. Christopher and Nevis. The Constitution of St. Christopher and Nevis. And the law. And the law. That I will conscientiously. That I will conscientiously. Impartially. Impartially. And to the best of my ability. And to the best of my ability. Discharge my duties as Prime Minister. Discharge my duties as Prime Minister. And do right. And do right. To all manner of people. To all manner of people. Without fear or favor. Without fear or favor. Affection or ill will. Affection or ill will. So help me God. So help me God. Governor General, His Excellency Sir Edmund Lawrence, presented the instrument of appointment. By virtue and in exercise of the power in me vested by Section 52.1 and 2 of the Constitution of St. Christopher and Nevis, I do hereby appoint you the said Dr. Timothy Sylvester Harris to be the Prime Minister of St. Christopher and Nevis with all the powers and rights, privileges and advantages to the same belonging or appertaining with effect from Wednesday, 18 February 2015. And I do hereby command all and singular Her Majesty's officers and loving subjects in St. Christopher and Nevis and all whom it may concern to take due notice hereof and to govern themselves accordingly. Given under my hand and the public seal of St. Christopher and Nevis, this 18th day of February 2015 and in the 64th year of Her Majesty's reign, Edmund W. Lawrence, Governor General. Prime Minister Harris thanked persons who participated in the recent general elections and those that prayed for the prosperity of the nation. The Honorable Vincent Byron Jr. was also sworn in as Attorney General and a Senator in the Federal Parliament. I, Vincent Gerald Byron, I, Vincent Fitzgerald Byron, do swear, do swear that I will faithfully that I will faithfully bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Her heirs and successors. Her heirs and successors. According to law. According to law. So help me God. So help me God. 
Members of the new cabinet will be sworn in at a public ceremony to be announced later. The swearing-in was witnessed by family and close friends, along with all candidates from the winning team that contested the 2015 general election held on February 16th. A large number of well-wishers also gathered around the environs of Government House to show support. The sidewalks outside Government House were packed on Wednesday afternoon as hundreds of supporters thronged to witness Prime Minister Harris take the oaths. Meantime, as the Federation's new Prime Minister was being sworn in yesterday, Team Unity supporters here on Nevis, joined by supporters from the sister island of St. Kitts, took to the streets of Nevis for a massive motorcade to celebrate the tripartite coalition's victory in Monday's polls. The motorcade, which commenced and culminated in Charlestown, climaxed with a rally at the DR Walwyn Plaza. And I want to challenge all of you. All of you citizens of St. Kitts and Nevis to recognize that together we have a country to build and we have people to develop and we have to ensure that we develop ourselves so that we can benefit from the labors of our investment in this country. It is high time that those of us who are citizens see that we are the ones who need to benefit and you see the signs of fair share for all not for some not for some not for those who will want to join the bandwagon to see what they could get but those of us all of us who are citizens of this country and all of our visiting friends and residents who see to come here to work and to help us to build I want you to be part of that mighty army in unity to make St. Kitts and Nevis a better country for all of us. Today, we have a brand new Prime Minister in our country. But ladies and gentlemen, I also wish you to appreciate the symbolism that the first speech that our new Prime Minister is going to make after being sworn in is in Charlestown, Nevis. If you wanted a demonstration of unity, that is unity. That he would have braved the high seas to come and make his main address here in Charlestown says to me that we are indeed in a new era in our country. Following the swearing in ceremony, newly installed Prime Minister, the Honorable Dr. Timothy Harris, journeyed to Nevis to join the rally. You have made history, and St. Kitts and Nevis will be better for it. So thank you very much. I want to say how humbled I am by the opportunity to serve the people of St. Kitts and the people of Nevis as your Prime Minister. And I promise that I will endeavor at all times to be your worthy chief servant. I promise you going forward that we certainly shall be a better government. I promise you going forward we shall be an improved government. I promise you going forward we shall be a caring and compassionate government. Prime Minister Harris reaffirmed to the people of Nevis the commitments which the coalition Team Unity has made. We could not have succeeded without the strong support of your Premier, the Honorable Van Zemri. And I say thank you publicly. For Van has been a stabilizing force in team unity. Cool and calm and disciplined and organized. Experienced and in touch with the people. And so I say thank you to the people of Nevis for reposing your confidence in a leader like 
Premier Van Samri. There are times when Douglas behaves so disgracefully and Vance in contrast behaves so decently and calmly and respectfully. I say, oh Lord, oh God, you should have make another Van Samri for Sankey. Also addressing last night's rally were newly elected members of the National Assembly, the Honorable Ian Patches Lybird, the Honorable Eugene Hamilton, the Honorable Sean Richards, and the Honorable Lindsey Grant, as well as Team Unity members, the Honorable Alexis Jeffers, Sam Condor, and John L. Powell. Stay with us, we'll have more local news after this break. Welcome to Nevis. It's easy to believe that all Caribbean islands are the same until you visit Nevis. Nevis is the Caribbean of a bygone era. You will enjoy a most intimate vacation on Nevis. You're only a stranger here once. We offer exclusive and barefoot luxury stays. With only 400 hotel rooms, our island may be exclusive. But the warm, genuine and friendly welcome is just everywhere. We look forward to meeting you. Visit nevisisland.com. Welcome back. Prime Minister Kamala Pesad Bissessar has congratulated Dr. Timothy Harris on his appointment as Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis following general elections on the island on Monday, February 16, 2015. On behalf of the government and people of Trinidad and Tobago and on her own behalf, Prime Minister Kamala Pesad Bissessar congratulated the political leader of Team Unity, the Honorable Dr. Timothy Harris, on his victory. Prime Minister Harris led a coalition of three parties to win seven of the 11 seats in the national legislature. Prime Minister Pesad Besessar says she looks forward to working with Prime Minister Harris as the members of the Caribbean community seek to advance regional integration and cooperation. Meantime, Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Ralph Gonzalez, on Tuesday also congratulated Team Unity on winning the general elections. The Caribbean Community CARICOM team that observed Monday's general election says the election process had the potential to disturb and even disrupt the electors peaceful exercise of their franchise but the mission is praising the voters of St. Kitts and Nevis for their enlightened response to these challenges. The CARICOM team headed by the former chairman of the Guyana Elections Commission Rudy Collins said it focused its attention on the conduct of the election itself and observed the activities at more than 50 of the 123 polling stations. The process in virtually every instance was orderly and appears to have been administered within the context of all the relevant laws, rules and regulations, the CARICOM team says. The mission is commending the voters for their enlightened response to these challenges, adding that the maturity of their response resulted in the satisfactory conclusion of all the activities on election day, free of any significant incident that would inhibit the exercise of their democratic right to vote for the candidate of their choice. The CARICOM team says it would analyze the expressions of various stakeholders with whom it held meetings that included uncomfortable frankness of the many legal, institutional and administrative challenges with which they had to cope and which in their collective view had an ongoing impact on the effectiveness of the St. Kitts and Nevis election process as a whole. The team will be making substantive recommendations for future action to be initiated by the CARICOM Secretariat towards ensuring that common regional standards become the hallmark of elections in member states of the Caribbean community. And finally, the Electoral Observation Mission of the Organization of American States OAS in St. Kitts and Nevis, led by Ambassador Frank Amalger, has congratulated Prime Minister Harris and the St. Kitts and Nevis Team Unity for the victory in Monday's general election. The mission has called on all to respect the official results announced by the electoral authorities. The mission observed that the counting and transmission of results was extremely
extremely slow, stemming from a series of procedural difficulties. More than 12 hours after the closing of the polls, there was no information on the outcome of the election. The mission notes that the delay in the dissemination of results was due to two main issues. First, counting started late due to instructions given to returning officers with regard to the transportation of the ballot boxes of the early voting carried out on February 14th for essential services personnel and the security forces. Second, challenges were presented during the counting process and some of the results were being contested. Despite the problems encountered after the closing of the polls, the OAS Electoral Observer Mission says it is pleased to observe that in general, election day was carried out in an orderly and pacific manner. The team urges that priority be given to a calm and orderly transition while recommending that the technical and procedural issues observed during this electoral process should be addressed during a post-electoral period in this sense and in the spirit of helping the electoral authorities and citizens of St. Kitts and Nevis to strengthen its democratic process. The observation mission will be issuing a more detailed report with its observations and recommendations. That's it for tonight's edition of the Nevis Newscast. Thank you for viewing. Good night.